Hello, everybody. This is Ty Warner with Kissoft and uh, Gleason and also Taika Engineering. I guess we're all kind of tied together a little bit. I have a gear design here. It's a 20 tooth. It's a one-to-one -one design. Um, it's a 20 tooth gear design. And you can see that this is the, the gear mesh. Uh, I have a standard reference profile. Um, standard tolerances. I have a fairly reasonable rating, I think. Um, and then some factors. I didn't really change these, just calculation method, okay? But this gear mesh in particular doesn't really match the 3D model that they want to make the gear from, all right? So what I want to do now is I want to create a, a DXF model of the actual tooth profile, and I want to read this in to, to uh, KISSSOFT. And the way I do that is I go into my CAD software program, whatever it is, I create a plane at the center of the tip of the tooth, and I also and then I create a, a DXF profile that's one half the tooth space width. So if you look at this, I happen to be using uh, SolidWorks. My profile goes from the center of the tooth down to the center of the root. So I got a half a half a tooth here, okay? So it's a half a pitch. I save that as a DXF file. I make sure that when I save that DXF file, I know what my units are, all right? Met, metric or inches, whatever, because I'm going to import this now into KISSOFT. So in KISSOFT, I have this measurement here. I have these these uh, this data. And it's telling me the tip circle, and I got root safety and flank safety, and, and this is my information. When I go into my, uh, when I want to bring in my actual data, I'd have to activate my tooth form. You see, I've already got it on. And let's say I want to grab the second gear. So for gear two, I'm going to actually deactivate and run this. So I have no tooth form defined. Now I'm going to add import cylindrical gear data. And that DXF file, that tooth I showed you from SolidWorks, I'm actually, I just saved it on the desktop. Right here is tooth. I brought it in. Um, the diametral pitch, I'm pretty sure that's what it is, 16.933. I just did a hand calc. And here now I'm going to, I can... Uh, if I hit this information button, it shows me how it's going to read this in, right? And then I'm going to do a preview. And on my preview, it's read in. So here's my tooth form. It's a lot different than the one that I had. Now I'm going to run this again. And here I have my tooth form, my actual geometry versus my calculated, all right? So in here, I'm going to actually, I'm going to turn the, uh, the gear one, I'm going to make this curve, I'm going to change that color to a, uh, to a red, all right? So here's my generated tooth form from the software, and here's my actual imported tooth form. Well, maybe over here I need to change this a little bit, maybe I need to make this, if I want to change the center distance without uh, just trying to balance everything out and change profile shifts and all that. Make sure you go to module specific settings and turn this calculation with operating center distance and manufacturing profile shift. Okay, what this does is it tells the program that you're going to move these things around a little bit. And when you do that, um, this um, center distance is going to change. If you don't do it, it'll it'll blow up with crazy profile shifts and that sort of thing. So so say I, what's 31 look like? I'm going to look at it here. Okay, that doesn't look terrible, but it looks kind of not so great. Maybe it needs to be like a, a 30.75. Okay, now it's starting to kind of sit in here somewhere. I don't know if that's enough tooth, tooth space on the top or not. But anyways, the program is now calculating root safety for each of these, and flank safety uh, based on the profile here, okay? 
And I can go one step further, and I can turn my contact analysis on, and I can run this again. I'm just going to run it kind of normal here. And I can get an idea of what my actual tooth stress are. I think this tooth stress here for the second gear is going to be more. So if I go down here into contact analysis and tooth root stress for gear B, here's my tooth root stress, 300 looks like. And I can turn it on for gear A, which is this red gear. And it's a lot less. Okay. If you're going to run your own tooth profiles, I, I recommend you turn the contact analysis on and look at your tooth root stress um, using the contact analysis. It's going to be more, uh, more accurate anyways. If you want to run the standards, okay, go, into, go to your ratings and turn the graphical method on for the root stress, all right? So you can see there's some differences here, right? Calculated versus the root form calculation. So this is this is what you run into is you're trying to analyze this tooth root versus this tooth root. One is generated using a cutter form, and the other one is not generated using a cutter form. This is almost like a constructed involute. In fact, it, to me, it looks like a constructed involute type of a, a tooth form. So you can see here the flank safety on the second gear is 2.0. Four, seven, and the flank safety on the first gear, or sorry, the, the root safety. Flank safety doesn't change. Root safety, I'm sorry, I was. Um, it's less on the second gear. You'd expect it to be less. Is is 0.4 that much less? Well, it could be. Um, but this is the uh, the results of an imported tooth profile. Okay. So it's not too hard. The hardest thing here is making sure that. If you have a gear that you're reverse engineering, say you've got a laser uh, scan profile, you can actually create a DXF off of that, read it in, and then and you can you can run the contact analysis. You can look at the um, uh, you know the the transmission error. In this case, it's you know pretty ginormous. Uh, you can look at contact stress. You can look at all kinds of certain things. Here I can I can actually in the graphics look again at um, the stress distribution on stress distribution on the, uh, the second gear, which I'm interested in. What does that look like? Um, here's the second gear. You can see I got that crazy sharp corner, and this is a stress distribution. Okay. If you have any questions, you certainly can go to uh, Kisssoft k i s s s o f t dot com. And uh, dig around in the tutorials there. I can show you that. Um, let's see. It's just www.kissoff.com. You can also call me at uh, 715-477-0828. And I can help support you with this. If you want to buy a seat, I can support you. If you want a test license, I can get you one of those too. But this is how you would import your own geometry from 3D if that's what you're going to do. And if you create this in um, uh, AutoCAD or whatever, just make sure that you get that the right way. And then you just go to Tooth Form, add your import right here, and make sure you turn this other one off, because if I leave that on, it's going to show up again over here. It's going to override this import cylindrical gear data. All right? So good luck on your gear designs. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact me. Thanks.